Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Loki, and I'm back with some Pokemon Silver Nuzlocke in today's episode. First of all, I'm going to have to go back. It's going to be basically the Nux training arc. Um, I'm going back to the Mercury Rhyme to leave two Pokemon in there because Raiders fan reminded me I could totally just leave two Pokemon there and they could be trained on the side in case uh, something in the reserves happens to them. So I'm going to go do that. But yeah, this, is, this episode doesn't end until Nux is evolved. Not a second sooner, not a second later. So strap in, because this is going to be, a, I assume, an extremely long episode. Because he's got maybe ten levels to go. Something to that amount. Oh, man. And a little bit later on, I will be going through some of the questions that I asked for some people. Some people left some, so I'll answer them. And stuff like that. So we'll have a good old time. So sit down. Relax, everyone. I promise it won't be 45 minutes of wrestling. Even though, man... Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It could be. Especially after that WrestleMania. I also just reminded myself I can totally catch a Pokemon here because Nightmare knows Headbutt. Okay. Come on. Come on, Nightmare. Come on, Nightmare. You got this, buddy. Let's try this one. No? Come on. Headbutt. No, come on. Headbutt here. Hmm. Headbutt. No, nothing. Damn, let's go. Alright, let's go to the daycare center. Some guy just replied, Bruh, Heinwald was the only unique healer in the game since... One moment? Because now I need to see what's up with this. This is a comment to, I believe, the uh, Grace Dragalia video I did, which is for some reason extremely um, popular. I don't understand. He says, Bruh, Heinwald was the only unique healer in the game since he provides real DPS, a little team buff, and good healing. All the other healers are just heal bots. Someone gets some buff, but meh. Now Grace is another unique healer, and I'm glad of it. But you really chose the wrong example among all the healers in the game. <laughs> oh yeah, because the other guy was saying, instead of just being a heal bot like Heinwald, which is what Heinwald is. Weird. People arguing. Not arguing. He's kind of like giving a counterpoint. Interesting. For sure. I'm not used to people um, talking in my comments. <laughs> it's still a very odd sensation to wake up and see comments. It's really weird. It honestly is. Um, just because for the longest time I just had no comments ever. It was just like expected that I would get no comments or something. I'm going the completely wrong way. Um, not to say, like, oh, I always need comments, but it's weird because, I don't know, it just feels weird. I'm not used to having, and you know, occasional there's people who always comment on my stuff and I always love them and appreciate them, um, but it's just weird in general to have people just, like, actual having, engaging in conversation. It's almost like that thing all YouTubers say, which I still don't consider myself one, I'm just a guy who makes YouTube videos. Um, for now anyway, but it's crazy to think about. Man. Hello, Hoot Hoot. I need to also remember that I'm playing a Nuzlocke, so if Nux dies, then this entire training arc is moot, and we have some real problems heading into the next gym. Alright, let's go. Doom, doom, doom. I need to remember to heal myself at the next junction. Right here. I'll heal myself right here. Ah, okay. And then we'll deposit two Pokemon and we'll leave them there. Hopefully the two Pokemon I leave there don't make babies. Because I feel like I'm using the daycare center as like an excuse to eventually one day make a, an egg of someone. Who? Who knows? But, you know. Alright, let me see. Okay, let's deposit. Raiders and Snake. Bye bye, guys. And then we'll withdraw because that's the next thing we need to do. Let's see, who would be good? Hmm. I mean, may as well because I'm not going to actually train a Magikarp. 
And who else would be good? Mm, maybe Nighthawk. You know what? I'll make it Dom. There's no way Dom is going to get down with this Magikarp. Because I'm pretty sure they're both females. Not to say that they can't get down. I just mean that no egg will spawn. That's just... That's just the facts, folks. Alright, let's see. Yes. Damn, that really? Okay. Dom. I guess Dom is a dude. Oh, no. I can't believe it. Like, I haven't done anything, but if you want him back, it's gonna cost you a hundred. Like, what the f Go to hell, old man. Who the hell you think you are? Nickel and diming. Me, a boy. Just a boy out here trying to make it in the world of Pokemon. Alright. I'm gonna go into Bill's PC. And withdraw the two Pokemon. Raiders. And I can't believe it doesn't remember. I can actually believe it again. This is a Game Boy game after all. Got Snake. Okay. Please tell me that I'm back already. You're gonna need a little more time with us. No, never mind. Come again. What I wanted to know is if they're getting freaky. Okay, yeah, here. We can ask Dom. Dom. Tell him to him. Yeah. Okay, thank God. Good. Don't. Please don't have sex with that fish. Or get down. Whatever Pokemon do. I'm not 100% sure on the process of it. Not that there isn't, like, a bunch of drawings of what happens of it, but I don't consider that canon. If it doesn't happen in a game, then it doesn't happen in real life. And as good as these drawings are, it's just not what, how it actually happens. Regardless of how you draw Blaziken, I refuse to believe this is how it's done until I see it in-game. Alright, Nux, you got this. Ember! Burn, Nidoran. Later. Only 102. Psh, it's nothing. Use cut, and let's get back to training. Run, 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 all the way back. And by run, I mean bike. Bike running. Let me guess, another Vulpix. No, Hoot Hoot, okay. I can take down a Hoot Hoot. Quick tag. Nope. I thought it would die, but nope. Quick tag! Now it dies. Okay. Let's go back to the training spot. Which is in the ocean. Because that's where the higher level Pokemon are at. I mean, like 19 to 25 ish. Something like that. Excuse me. Going through. Oh, I should buy some milk from that guy. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Magnemite! Hello! Hello, friend. Why the hell? Oh, it would've been cool to have Magnemite. It's unfortunate we don't, though. It's okay. Meowth is perfectly okay. He has Payday, so if we ever needed money, we just use Payday nonstop until we got money. I don't think he has it currently, though. <laughs> we have to teach it to him. Alright. Give me your milk, man. I best be milking. Are you kidding me? I can only buy the milk once. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, this is such a ripoff. I gave her all the berries in the world. And she only wants to give me my milk once. Is this a new route, by the way? I want to say no, but just to be sure. Oh, it totally is! We never caught a Pokemon here. So we can catch a Pokemon, actually. If we run into one. Nah, that's just Mouse. And by the transitive properties, he does not count. I remember that. I made that rule, so... Eradicate does not count. He might accidentally fuck us up, though. If he has something like Hyper Fang on him. And a very good crit rant. Yeah, there it is. Oof. Okay, didn't do as much damage as I was thinking, which is good. Still dealt a lot, though. That's not shabby damage for Eradicate. 
God, Raticate is like... Raticate is one of the most forgotten Pokemon out there, but he has one of the most deadly early game moves. <laughs> Hyper Fang is no joke. Hello, meow. I might not be able to find anything here at, at night, so I might have to come back. I also hope that Meowth doesn't kill Nux. Wouldn't it have been hilarious, though? I would have laughed. Alright, let's go heal up Nux now. Back. I guess I'll come back here during the day, because now that I think about it, there might be a good chance for me to find a Pidgey there. So... I'm gonna just wait on that one. This seems like a good idea to me, if you ask me. If you ask my opinion on the situation. And it can train here easy because it just like literally has a super ready access to um, the Pokemon Center. Alright. See you later, hot stuff. Into the water we go. Raider's fan using Surf. And now... We start the grind officially. Woo boy! Circle, circle, circle. What's our first Pokemon? It's a Tentacruel! Sweet. Oh man, do I have to go deeper into the ocean to find the better Pokemon? I mean, higher level Pokemon, because a level 20 Tentacruel is nothing. I say as Nux does not deal a lot of damage. Don't you use that move against me. I'm gonna see how much Ember does. Because I remember Ember killing Wooper, but I'm- okay, no. It's not gonna do anything. Ah, <sighs> man. Unfortunate. Alright, let's get back to it. It del- it del- it deals so little damage. It's not even funny. Nux, for the love of god, please learn a good move. I'm tired of you having the not good moves. You know, the super stupid Supersonic is what's gonna- it's gonna screw me up. I hate that. I hate confusion so much. Especially after what it did to us. Nux, get out of your goddamn confusion. Thank you. Kill him too, by the way, while you're at it. If you're done being forgetful. <sighs> That's annoying. Super potion. I have no choice. I don't want to switch because then it defeats the purpose of training. Stop being confused, boy. Damn it, boy. I swear, if you're below 30 again, I might actually... Oh, god damn it. Waste of my goddamn time. You need to learn your good moves, Nux. I'm tired. You need to learn Slash. That's what you need. Because I know you have Slash later on. Alright. While I'm doing this, I may as well pull up the question. It's going to be better than me just yelling at Nux for the remainder of this. Let me find the question. The first one comes from YouTube. I know for that. That much for sure. Okay. 291. Ah, the 400 could have been Nux's. That close to 500 could have been Nux's. That's over 500, actually, I think. Math, I forget how to do it. Please heal me, sir, madam. Apologies. Alright, let's get into this question. Okay, first question comes in from a Raiders fan who asked What game that isn't released yet are you most excited about? Hmm. That's a good question. I don't... Hmm. 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 I'm gonna have to think long and deep about this one, because I really don't... It's been weird ever since, like, my PS4 has been in storage. I haven't really been super catching up with games. I guess if this counts, I would say, um... No, I don't think this counts at all, because it's like... Hmm. Hmm. Well, before this, it was Animal Crossing, and now, oh, you know what? I would. I'm looking forward to Breath of the Wild too. If I were to pick a game, that's the one one I can remember. That's also one that's actually legitimately coming out. I cannot believe Nux got confused and poisoned at the same goddamn time. Oh, you're gonna be the death of me, Nux. You're going to be the literal death of me. 
If it's not the poison and everything else killing you, it's something. Uh, but yeah, that game. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I like the first one a whole bunch. Uh, not enough to actually finish it, though, because um, I have to share the Switch with my brother and my sister. So it was definitely like shared around a bunch. So by the time it got to me, I'm going to have to switch into Fisto. Because Nux is poisoned and confused, and that's just equal, equally good ways of just like losing him. Um, and this stupid son of a bitch knows acid. But yeah, that one I'm looking forward to. Any other game... Like, I'm trying to think about the games that are coming up, and the one that was that came to my mind is... Um, uh, fuck, what was the name of it? The Last of Us, there you go. Last of Us 2. Which I've never... I was... I didn't finish Last of Us, because I really didn't like how it played. I thought it was a very bad playing video game. A very bad playing stealth game, I should say. Um, and from all accounts of that, from the people who are legit about that game, they say that the worst part about it is actually playing The Last of Us. Um, which I would agree. It's just not fun. I think like, nothing about it is fun. To be fair, I have the same complaint about Uncharted. I don't think Uncharted is fun to play at all. I think Uncharted is fun to look at. I think it looks beautiful. There's no denying the technical craft behind everything that, that Naughty Dog does there, but in terms of actual gameplay, I don't think I've ever liked a single one of their games that plays. I can't name you a single one that they've made that I would be like, oh, I loved how that game played. I could tell you I loved how that game looked. I loved the technical things behind it, but not actually the game itself. Um, maybe story parts, like the, the the theming, stuff like that, but I can't believe you fucking got poisoned again. Um, then what else? Maybe if I look up what's coming out this year nothing nothing super coming to mind especially with how tight money's been and all that other stuff i've just kind of put games in the back of my mind uh let's see upcoming coming games 2020 ah let's go heal you up uh oh man final fantasy 7 i'm interested to see if that thing comes to i forget is it coming to PC? Let me just check real quick. It's on Unreal Engine, so I don't see why not. Platforms only currently is PS4. Hmm. Okay. Um, if I had my PS4, I would definitely be kind of excited for it. F feels like the people who were excited for it are suddenly like not excited for it anymore, but I've never played Final Fantasy VII, so I can't really speak to any of those claims of how it is or how it is not. Let's see. Yeah, man. The problem is, is that a lot of the good games don't come out till November. Oh, Cyberpunk 2077. That actually... Mm, yeah, I really want to play that. I finally got into Witcher 3 and was able to like it. Uh, I still haven't finished it. <laughs> really like it, though. Um, you'll see a common theme with a lot of the games I play. Uh, but I like cyberpunk stuff, and I think they have a chance of making something good there. Whether or not that means anything, we'll see. Uh, still going to be... Still not sure if what games are going to be out this year because of, you know, life currently. Um... Hmm. Let me look up this list that says 50 upcoming games. It's a tentacle. Okay, cool. Animal Crossing is on this. I'm occasionally looking up to see if Nux is dead or not. Current status, not dead. Wow, he really got crit? Created by a freaking okay. As long as he's not poisoned or confused, he might get his defense lowered by this though. So I gotta pay attention to that. No, he didn't. Okay. Yeah, I think that was that's basically it for me. I think that that kind of sh the from the quick look around, I want to say it was that, and that's it. I just like. Again, the, the games that I'm super excited for are usually the small indie ones that have very little things behind them. But also, like, usually E3 is around, and that's when I'm like, I look at the games and I'm like, Ooh, that looks so cool, I can't wait to play that, but no E3 this year. So I don't really have that anymore. 
So it makes, you know, figuring out what actually is fun to play a little bit harder for me. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing to think about. Hmm. Well, anyway, thank you for the question. Basically, the, of the ones I saw that are coming in the year of our Lord 2020, it is um, Cyberpunk by, a, I think, a pretty wide margin. So thank you for the question. Let's go on to the next one as Nux gets ready to fight this tentacle. All right. This one comes from Hector from Twitter, Hector G2000. And he has three questions. Top three Pokemon... Two, your favorite, least favorite adventurer and Dragalia. And three, your favorite ice cream flavor. All right, let's start with number one. Three Pokemon. Hmm. Wooper is definitely on the list. And in no particular order, just because I don't like the idea of ordering them. <laughs> um, then right after them, it's the first starter I ever like legitimately used, which was Squirtle. I love Squirtle to the death of me, uh, for sure. Um, and then the third one would have to be, hmm. like, I'm trying to think of, like, of all the ones, the, the top three is, it, oh, it, it's D-Watt, because I love D-Watt's look, I love his theming, I really think we got screwed over by Samurott not being the coolest Pokemon in the history of Pokemon. It's really, it's a real shame because I feel like all the design, cool designs they would have used for Samurott got put into um, Greninja instead. <laughs> so we lost out on a very cool looking Pokemon. Uh, instead we got this weird fortress mammal Pokemon instead. That I'm not the biggest fan of, if you can't tell. Um, so yeah, those three. Uh, funny enough, on the modcast back when, um, back when the first ever one I did with the Ginyu Force, which was which was my way of signifying whether or not I was hosting, is that if you saw Pokemon, that meant that Zen wasn't there and I was going to be the host. Um, that way, from a visual standpoint, you would know immediately if it was an episode with uh, Zen as the host or me as the host, and then eventually it became I was the host. Um, and so that that changed the entire dy dynamic of things. But in the beginning, that was it. And actually, instead of a Wooper, it was a Dewat. And Wooper didn't become super loved until um, I was talking to um, Lerp and Nabe, or Jom, as some people know. The, the co-founders of Trash Alliance, basically. The, the whole reason Trash Alliance exists is because of them, too. Um, they co-founded it with me. Um, and we have our own special little Discord where we just hang out. Stuff like that. Cool stuff. We say cool stuff and talk about anime and stuff and call everything trash. Um, but anyway, <laughs> what was I going to say? In there, we started looking at Wooper art for Pokemon cards, and we realized that Wooper art in Pokemon cards were some of the best because Wooper is just such a simple design. So the art of for Woopers were always like amazing in some like amazing way, and that's where the the whole Wooper love came from. To the point now when like I actually made a Twitter, I was like, okay, I have to make an icon of something, um, and it's Woopers, and it's been Woopers since I've been there. It's never not been Woopers. It's never not been one. Um, I wonder what would happen if I ever changed my profile off of a Wooper. Mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. But yeah, there's, there's a Wooper backstory. Uh, let me see, your favorite and least favorite adventurer in Dragalia. Mm, that's Mim. <laughs> uh, well, character or actual adventure to play? Because if it's adventure to play, it's Zanya. I love I love Zanya because she's just like a staff user and she's far range and she burns everything and it's super easy to play. Um, and her roles in all the harder content are pretty simple. It's like keep your DPS up. Um, if there's an Ezolith as the baiter, then you have to bait out the giant dragon blast. Not the dragon blast, the trident in HMS, but other than that, you're pretty simple. Press tap buttons until it did. Until it did. Um, and then least favorite. Mm, that's a harder question. There's no, like, one unit that I can stand above all else and be like, ugh, this exists. Um, I might say, you know what? It's not fair to him, because I don't hate his character. I hate his unit. Uh, it's Hawk. 
Hawk is maybe one of the best card, best units in the game. He got a Mana Spiral. He's one of the best. Um, the problem is, is that it's too good. Too good to the point where people are, like, abusing him in ways that's like, oh man, look how bad, look, not how bad, look how broken this meta is with all the power. Like, he can do this, but then it's like, he can win off uh, off color fights so why use anyone and then i go like why are you specifically doing something like this it seems like the easy way to not have hawk ruin your experience is to not use hawk but no one uses that logic everyone's always like oh man whatever it's similar to the people who were like in dokkan back in the old days with um gogeta they would say gogeta ruined the meta and then the answer is like if you don't you don't have to use Gogeta. That's the simple, the end and short beta of it all is that you don't have to use Gogeta. Um, you could always use any of the other leads if you wanted. There was nothing stopping you. And if you really badly wanted to use Gogeta, then hey, it's your prerogative to use them or not. Um, especially when it's a single player game. Now, it's a little bit weirder in Dragalia because it's co-op, but at the same time, like if you're playing co-op, then if there's an easy way to filter out so that Hawk never shows up, but if you're on purpose playing Hawk and complaining about what Hawk's doing, then shut the hell up and <laughs> just don't use Hawk. He's very good though. He's a very good unit and nothing against the character itself, but in terms of actual design, I feel like maybe they went a little bit too far. They went. He's strong, he's better than uh, Nef Nefari Nefaria as well, um, which just makes me sad because I like Nefaria more than Hawk as a character and. She got her mana spiral first, but um, he got the stronger version <laughs> of the buff, I suppose, um, which is really funny in a lot of ways. And finally, the last question, your favorite ice cream flavor, it's Rocky Road. There's really no debate on this one for me. Um, I don't know why I love Rocky. No, I do know why. It's because it has marshmallow and almonds in it. And almonds are tasty as hell. Marshmallows are tasty as hell. And chocolate ice cream is tasty as hell. So if I get all three of them together, it's like, oh, yeah. And if it's not that, it's cookies and cream. And then if it's not that, it's probably um, rainbow sherbet. I really like rainbow sherbet. I haven't tasted every single ice cream flavor out in the world, though. So there's definitely some flavors where I'm like, um, here's a good example. Pistachio. I have, no I have no idea if pistachio is good or not because I've never had it. Because the idea of eating a pistachio nut in ice cream flavor was enough for me to go like, why would you ever eat this? That sounds dumb. So I never did it. Um, but yeah, Rocky Road. It even has a good name. It looks like it tastes, so it's perfect. Um, and I would love some right now, actually, now that you mention it. But if not that, cookies and cream ice cream is fantastic. The Snickers ice cream is also very good. Um, oh, the, the, <laughs> the, the old um, um, wrestling ice cream bars. Those are also fantastic. It's a shame that you can only get them from people selling them in a truck or by themselves. Because I would gladly buy them in the stores. Get me some Undertaker Tasty Tasty ice cream bar. Or Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> I think they eventually made a CM Punk one because he did a whole promo about how I'm not the guy on the ice cream bars and then WWE was like, let's take this very real moment with the pipe bomb and then make it a reality. Which is both funny and like, uh, grumble, grumble, grumble. Um, yeah, ice cream's good. There's apparently some people, I think, no. I might end up getting this wrong. I think Common doesn't like cake. That's the thing he does, which I love ice cream cake. But he says he doesn't like cake because it's too sweet. And I'm just like, what? Madness. Get the hell out of here. Too sweet. The only thing that's too sweet is the NWO from wrestling because they too sweet each other. Then I'm doing the too sweet motion, but you can't see me. <laughs> but yeah, those are the questions. Thank you very much, Hector. Let's go catch another one. Jake says, I need to catch up. Yes, you do, Jake. <laughs> Some stuff happened while you were gone. Oh, poor Jake. I miss you, Jake. Chase gives a sad face because he understands what happened to Jake. Um, next question comes from Soul Rock, our whooper in, uh, in charge currently. He asks, How many whoopers would it take to build it to make a dam house? Kind of like a beaver. Hmm. I don't think whoopers are... You know what? I was going to say, I don't think whoopers are very smart but they might be actually the smartest Pokemon out there for all I know. Um, I would say an army. 
Yeah, an army. So let's say around a hundred whoopers working together, doing what, um... Oh, yeah, you almost beat a tough-ass Abra and then it <laughs> teleported away from you. Is that what happened, Todd? Because that's nothing to be happy about. Call me when it's Kadabra. Um... So yeah, 100, I think. To so just kind of be like, one needs to be the foreman, and then the other one kind of, the others kind of like fill out the different rules in building a dam house. Which I assume is a dam um, that has the same functionality as a house, but is also made of wood and can also stop water from coming in. I think those are the, the specific things of what your question is asking here. Um, oops, tackle instead of quick tack. I'll fix that next one. Ah, uh, not acid. That damn tentacle throwing acid in my eyes. Quick attack. Next question, I'm going to just say this one next. It comes from Robert Brent. He said, who did it better? You can't see this because it's a, it's on, on Twitter, but it's a picture of Perfect Cell pointing at his head. And then the other one is Kaiba pointing at his head. So he's asking me... I don't know if he's asking who's the better villain, because the answer is Kaiba. <laughs> Kaiba is a better villain than Cell. I don't think anyone will fight me on that. Unless they only seen Dragon Ball Z and Yu-Gi-Oh! to them is just like, oh, that really boring card game thing. Nah, nah, son. Kaiba's, Kaiba was able to actually beat people. And has cool. And he has dragons. What does Cell have? A big-ass head. And very vague abilities. <laughs> his nucleus is in his head or some shit. Uh, so yeah, I'll go with Kaiba. Go with my boy Kaiba. I like his style, I like his finesse. He actually gets to live unlike Perfect Cell, who is forgotten about by everyone in the entire world. Because even because Majin Buu is perfectly fine. I think I think it's actually at the point when you consider Super into the canon, which I do. Um, every villain of Goku's is a friend of his, except for Raditz and Perfect Cell, I think. Oh, when General Tao, but I don't consider him a main villain, I suppose. But a good amount of his villains are now his friends. I mean, technically speaking, Demon King Piccolo is not his friend. It's his son, but still. And finally, the last one comes from Jamie, who asks, Talk about other games that you are interested in, but don't post about. But never post about. <sighs> well, I mean, let me see. Usually I like to post about the games I like, though. Let me see. Let me go through the catalog. I really love Earthbound. I never post about Earthbound, but I love Earthbound. There's a part of me that really badly just wants to, after this Pokemon run, to actually do a Earthbound every day um, style of thing. Just because I don't want to jump into a Nuzlocke immediately afterwards, because that sounds like it'd be exhausting, especially if I'm going to be doing this entire game, which is in essence two Pokemon games in one. Um with a special ultra secret boss at the end. Um, I would love to do Earthbound every day. I love Earthbound so much. Earthbound is so... It might actually be the... I'm actually going to say it. It is the greatest JRPG ever made. Um, no contest. No other JRPG comes close. Not even. Now, I will say of the ones I played, because a lot of people love Final Fantasy VII... Um, and I just can't speak to it. And I think actually, if I'm being non hyperbole they're the my favorite Final Fantasy, um, which is Final Fantasy two in America, four in Japan. The one with Cecil and uh, Cecil, <laughs> the only get Rosa stuff, people like that. Kane, um, that would also be a very good game. Maybe I'll make a poll of it because it'll be like the next one is a JRPG. Now, the other answer is the other one I should obviously do is Persona, because Persona, unfortunately, I fucked up and made Persona 3 too hard. Um, so it's actually, if you want to know what has been stopping that, it's the fact that Persona 3 is on the hardest difficulty maniac, and I'm not in a very good position to actually beat it. Because otherwise, every other episode would be like me losing. And it's just a lot of reading in Persona 3, which... You know, actually, I probably could do right now, but I feel like not enough people are interested in Persona 3. From me, at least. Not in the current form that I do it. So, you know. I definitely would love to stop it. Just, uh, I will one day beat Persona 3. Just when is a good question. I might try and figure out a way to lower the difficulty or something. Yeah, that's gonna be... Maybe I'll just start from the beginning and lower the difficulty. I should really go heal Nux. 
Um. Also, oh, by that tran by the transit of property, if we ever f if I ever got my Vita TV back, I would love to stream Persona 4. Not pr not stream play Persona 4 Golden, which is the definitive dish edition of Persona 4, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's the greatest version. It's not like the PSP version where like some people can get out there, put a stick up their ass, and be like, "Oh no, you know, I miss out walking," and I'll be like, "Okay, yes." But Persona 3 Portable, in my mind, is the definitive definitive version because it actually fixes a lot of the gameplay problems with um, Persona 3 because it makes it more like Persona 4. Um, so it's less arcane and dumb shit, and so it's easier to understand um, and stuff like that. Party members are more balanced and stuff. Um, the other thing, and you can control your party, because in original Persona 3 you cannot control your party, which makes harder difficulty stuff super bad. It makes it so impossible to beat. Uh, but yeah, Persona 4 Golden, the best version of Persona 4 in my eyes. Uh, I don't think a lot of people will debate me on that, unless it's people who, like, for some reason never play it. No, for good reason, because no one owned a Vita, no one owns a Vita TV. Apparently Vitas are extremely expensive now, so... There's a guy with both. Ah, I'm pretty well off. Well, you know, you love it. You love to see it. Other games that I don't post about that I really love. Let me see. I'm trying to think of. Through the ages of it all. I think I post a good amount about my Mario. I think I've made it pretty clear that I'm a Mario person first and everything else second. I don't post about it enough, but I think Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 I, I love. And if it wasn't for the fact that my brother did a full play playthrough of them, I would gladly play them. Donkey Kong Country, which I think I will be uploading the first video of- not Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Kong 64. Um, which is a game I'm very nostalgic for and I love to play and I know- I remember- I played so much Donkey Kong 64 that I remember the control layout even to this day. Um, <clears throat> I've never been able to beat it though because that game is like 5,000 years long and it requires you to beat some real dumb shit to actually finish. <laughs> so I've just never been able to beat it, um, basically. Oh man, come on. We got this. I think Nox is pretty close. He's almost at his 30s. This is the longest training arc in the history of the world. <laughs> Let me see, any other games I can think of that I just don't talk a bunch? I think I've brought up, um, another game that I don't post about it, so, so if you only know me for my, um, Twitter stuff and not my YouTube. I'm a big fan of Hamtaro Ham Ham. Hamtaro Ham Ham. Ham Ham Heartbreak, um, which is a game I played with my brother and sister, and if we still had our house, I would gladly record more episodes. I don't want to do it with anyone else but them, because it's an adventure game, and you need as much voices, and it's super fun to record, and it's a delight through and through. It's about the devil stealing everyone's love, so it's very relatable, <laughs> um, and it's great for that. Let me see. Oh, another one. No More Heroes. I absolutely love No More Heroes. Um, no More Heroes 1. No More Heroes 2. I need to finish the Switch one that was released. The one that's not really a No More Heroes game, but is a No More Heroes. It's in the timeline of No More Heroes. Um, yeah, I love No More Heroes. I think number one is the... And this is going to sound crazy kind of saying this, but I really do think it's the best Wii game. Um... Nothing else legitimate, by the way, because some people might say, like, oh, that Project M is technically a Wii game, and I would say, like, no, it's some kind of weird fucking mod someone made, um, regardless of the quality of it being good or bad or whatever that. Um, yeah, I love No More Heroes, and I would love to play No More Heroes, actually, for the channel as well. It's another game that I'm thinking about making one of the rotating three games. It's a shame that a lot of it... No, it's not a shame because people watch what they want from me, so... As of this point, that's what they want to see from me. But the gotcha stuff just ends up being more views from me. But it's also, like, views of, like, the difference of, like, 20 people compared to 50. It's, like, a 30 people difference. So it's really not the end of the world, in my mind, but... Um... I always feel like it'd be better for to me to for me to stream some of those games, especially with No More Heroes, which I, again I love No More Heroes, but there's a lot of grinding in No More Heroes that's super annoying. Um, and No More Heroes Two is also great, but yeah, No More Heroes I think is underrated, but also I guess depending on who you ask, it's either overrated or it's underrated. <laughs> I say it's underrated just because um, 
no other like like it's hard to like exactly talk about like what kind of game it is it's kind of like the idea of like <sighs> what's the best way of putting it it tells a very in no more heroes one and two tells a very good story about violence and how we justify violence against each other and what what kind of like like what kind of things violence ends up leading to it's a lot of like interesting things where it's like um people are anti-violence but then so many are attracted to the actual nature of violence itself that's kind of in the way of like what's the best way i can put it like it's like a car crash no one likes a car crash when it happens in nascar but a lot of people only watch nascar for the for the car crash in essence so no more heroes in my mind is about basically that the idea of like these people who are all about violence and using violence in various ways to justify the life that they live and some decide to live a life of splendor and other decide to just like let it all completely develop them but the idea is basically that once the cycle of violence starts there is no ending it um because once you've entered it then there's no going back um and no more heroes is about in essence a man who's able to escape it it's also like a star wars parody <laughs> But a lot of the specific themes I'll talk about, like, if you play No More Hero 1 and then nothing else, then you don't see it. But at the start of 2, that's where some of it comes in. Where it's like, Travis is considered, Travis Touchdown is considered the uncrowned king. Because he's the only person to have ever, um, climbed the very top of the assassin ladder, leaderboard and then actually was able to leave. Because the very idea of, like, pop up, that he was able to do it and then actually be able to leave the life that he is currently leaving behind is something that they never even thought was something they could do so that's why i really like it and it tells a lot it has a lot of cool characters it has like a lot of has a lot of ref wrestling references as well um a lot of weird stuff just happens for the fun of it there's many games where you have to like feed a, a chubby kitty to get them in shape there's a lot of like dark undertones of stuff and in general, I love Suda51 games, even when they're not the greatest playing games. Because they have so much style behind them and love and craft and stuff like that. Shadows of the Damned is also another one that's really good. Oh god, I love Shadows of the Damned. I think I might need water. <laughs> I've been talking for like 40 something minutes. Oh man. Go Nux. I believe in you. Quick attack. We're almost there. I think. Uh, please evolve at 30 and not 32. If not, then we only have like, what, two more levels to go? Give or take. Give or take. It's also going to be unfortunate because I hope when he evolves is when he learns his good move. Let me see. Any other games I can think about that I don't really talk about but I absolutely love? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you know what? The the this is another game that I've been wanting to play, but I haven't been able to figure out the perfect time to play it. It's the Star Wars game, Shadows of the Empire. I love both of the Nintendo 64 Star Wars games, Shadows of the Empire and um, Rogue Squadron. I believe is the other one. Looks like I do need to count to 32. Damn, one more. Um, I absolutely love both of them, man. I love Rogue Squadron and I love Shadows of the Empire. I didn't even know that there was a story going on. Like, I played all of Shadows of the Empire thinking that I was Han Solo, only to discover at the end that I was actually not Han Solo. Um, just because I was Kyle Katarn, and he wears that vest and stuff, I believe. I think his name is Kyle Katarn. No, it's Dash Rendar. There you go. Oh, I love that game so much. I don't know if it holds up. It probably doesn't, but I think it's so cool. I think it's honestly the best Star Wars game out there. No, I think Rose Squadron is actually better, because um, it's easier to play, and it doesn't have to deal with a lot of the weird bullshit mechanic shooting that <laughs> Shadows of the Empire has. The problem with playing Star Wars games, um, on the channel specifically, is that all the music is by Star Wars people, 
uh, John Williams, um, so I get copyright struck in the second I upload anything from them. But it's fine, because as long as they don't come from my channel, I'm perfectly fine. And so far they haven't. All they want is the money from the video, and I go like, whatever, dude, take the damn money. Take the nine cents I'm earning off this pinball game, dude. Take it. It hurts more if it was done in, like, a Dragalia video. Um, because then they would take a full dollar. <laughs> As opposed to just the, the thing currently, but... Oh, man. Oh, man. Hello. Okay, we're almost there. We're getting closer and closer. We actually won't fight Jasmine. We'll save that for another episode, just because I've been so busy. I actually... The one time work actually started, like, heating up a bit, and it was on the day that I was going to record this extremely long Pokemon video. And it's like, great timing, dudes. Love it. You'll love to see it. <sighs> yeah, just because of that, I think I might not be able to do a Dragalia video. Even though I want to do a Dragalia video, it's not like I... It's mostly because Dragalia videos are why people, for the most part, subscribe to my channel. If you're here for not Dragalia stuff, know that I love and appreciate you. Because you are the people who may let me... Oh god, I need to go heal next before he dies. Because I love recording Dragalia, don't get me wrong. Um, I love that I finally have a gotcha game that is not a work collection that I can just make videos on nonstop and um, have a fun time and do all stuff like that. Like I really genuinely love what Dragalia has given me, has given me, because it finally gave me what I feel like is a separate voice that felt like I earned it myself, if that makes sense. Um, just because like Dokkan, I was in the Reddit, but you can't, you can't like deny the fact that a lot of people only recognize my video stuff because I was the Reddit mods. We were doing a modcast for it, so I was the Reddit channel, and that's why people recognize me for Dokkan stuff. So I guess in the back of my mind, the reason I never pushed hard on Dokkan was just because like I knew for a fact that that would always hang over me. Like, no matter what, that was always going to be my start, was that I got it from there. And the accusations of like... Oh, the only reason that people like him, the only reason you got your start is because you started this way. You didn't start like everyone else. You didn't start like people like, for example, and he would never use this kind of defense at all. But people like Defree, who's like started like from the low end of stuff, and he's built it to be like one of the voices of Dokkan, basically. <laughs> like him, like, that's different. Like, that's not my story with Dokkan. My story with Dokkan is that I was a Reddit mod and I did a very fun, fun thing called Modcast. And that's the reason why people associate me with Dokkan. But that's not my... That's just not my story. That's like... It's, it feels unearned. And I never felt like any of my Dokkan videos were good enough to be considered... Different from everyone else. And so I never really pushed super hard on Dokkan stuff. Now, that being said, the Dokkan stuff I do do, I feel, is different from a good amount of other people's. I definitely do have a different kind of... I have a more playful time, which is funny, actually. Funny enough, the only person that... If you want to know something that I try to do, but someone who actually succeeds at it, it's Nano's video Dokkan stuff, where Nano, I feel like, has super fun, like... You can tell that Nano just really loves playing Dokkan, and I feel like... When I record a Dokkan video, I'm there to have fun, and so does he. And that's why I love watching his stuff as well. Because it's like, he always is so excited for everything. He doesn't care about the mistakes he makes, for the most part. He just has fun, and he figures out new ways to, like, have fun with it. And I feel like I never could figure out that way for me and Dokkan. So it ended up being that way. Um, but yeah, I love that people are here for me for Dragalia, because... With the exception of my one collab I did with uh, Defree, which was around Fire Emblem Heroes, because he knew that I played Dragalia and he wanted to have some help in the video. That's why people knew him. But, you know, from that point on, it was me trying to build up Dragalia by myself. I didn't have Zen. Usually I have Zen with me, so... I didn't have Zen with me. So it made an entire thing completely different. So, you know, that's my feeling on it. Now... <laughs> I need to check. Does what level does Cyndaquil evolve? Because I swear to God, Quilava. Because if we, if I use this rare candy and it's actually 36, I might die. What level does Quilava evolve? 
and evolves into Typhlosion at level 36. Alright everyone, water break. BRB. Alright, I'm back. Oof, I needed that water. Might take- Aw, oh, son of a fucking bitch, I forgot- Aw, oh, that sucks. I forgot I had the fucking rare candy equipped. That's unfortunate. Four levels to go, though. Oh, man. Back into it. I mean, no, he's not ready. It's a Steelix. Like, I come on. Steelix is very tough. Oh, boy. So, yeah, that, I think that was the last of the questions. Actually, let me double check to see if there were any other questions, but I'll start by tackling. Hmm, let's see. Of course he's confused. I have to make sure he doesn't die by confusion. He did not. <laughs> Title of Brett says, 45 minutes to talk about wrestling is fine with me. Screw it. We're this far in, everyone. Let's talk about freaking WrestleMania. So first of all, let's start with the Boneyard match. Actually, let me pull up WrestleMania. So if you don't know this, WrestleMania... And actually, you know, screw it. If I remember what match was on, I'll tell you about what match was on. Um... <sighs> Fuck, what was I about to say? Um... So farting is farting. I guess we'll start with the Boneyard match. Uh, AJ Styles fought The Undertaker in a Boneyard match, and I felt like that was the start of like, yo, this was actually kind of dope, because I feel like the best use of The Undertaker is actually not having him wrestle. It's having him be in... Because everyone who's seen him in Saudi Arabia knows, and the previous WrestleMania matches, is that he just can't go anymore. He's old. But... This style of match where it's cinematic, he can kind of take a breath, he doesn't have to like lose his hair like crazy and stuff. It can make him look a little bit cooler and have cool shots and do all this other stuff. I feel like that's the best way of actually using The Undertaker now, and they should just stay that way now. Um, because what they're currently doing with him, which is having him actually legitimately fight, is just not working out anymore. He's too old, and I don't want to see Undertaker die. Of course, god damn it. You were doing so good, bro. What happened? What happened? What happened to you, bro? You're gonna have to bring in Fisto for the save. This is a dumb game. I hate confusion so much. You better not poison Kit Fisto, otherwise. Gah! I can't believe I had to fight you. I have had to fight you for the past hour. Because there's no other level, higher level Pokemon. Oh, actually, no. I'm not going to use that route because if I need to start training the next Pokemon for that specific way up there. So I'm saving that for another Pokemon. Um, but what the hell is I talking about? Um, I was talking some, something. Oh yeah, so the wrestling match, the Boneyard match, great use of the Undertaker. Great use of AJ Styles. They were crazy ninja men. The OC got to do some stuff, and AJ Styles got literally buried. Not in the sense of like, oh, he didn't look strong. He literally just got dug a grave for and buried into the damn ground. That's crazy. Some other stuff, which I believe is I currently is currently what I'm thinking is WrestleMania one, WrestleMania Part One, um, the ladies tag team championship stuff. I just can't care about. I don't know what it's about. Maybe it's because they're like I love like I love the wrestlers in it. In theory, I think Bailey is a fantastic wrestler. I think Oscar's great. I think uh, her tag team partner, which I can't remember the name of right now, is great. Um, a lot of talented women, but they never get any actual story development. So I feel like the same stories that they have currently are the same ones that have been around since the beginning of fucking time. Um, it, they just don't change. The only one that's changed is Bailey, but even then I feel like nothing really changed. I can't believe you took so much damage from that, Nux. I, you are unbelievable. Where is the super potion? Um, 
so I just can't bring myself to like it. Like I don't like the wrestling is fantastic. There's no denying that the fa the wrestling that they do, the work that they do is fantastic. I just can't care for it. Um, and it's not like I haven't cared about women's wrestling in the past. I've I've cared about it back when people weren't like even liking about it. Um, I have to now fucking change. A little nightmare. Um, so, I don't think it's really that. I think it's just like, I don't know, I'm not a fan of the character work and stuff. Um, because I don't really feel like they have characters. They don't have actually evolving characters, they have the same characters. Like, if you were, if, I completely forgot that Bailey has been champion for so long. Like, I forgot that she was still champion from last WrestleMania when she won it. Like, what? <laughs> like, how... How do you just forget something like that when you're in essence one of the top stars, female stars of that division? How does how does that happen? And the reason is is that they don't have the same like screen time in a way that's like effective in building their character in ways. And it's a shame, but that's how I currently feel about it for sure. And <coughs> excuse me. WWE just needs to allow them to have I don't know, more freedom, stuff like that. Um, more involvement in storylines, more like... It's crazy to me that the most involved female story involves Otis, and neither woman fought. And it's like, okay. It just is Dolph Ziggler getting his ass kicked for the 5,000th time, because that's all he's good for. And that's all he's ever been good at, is being a shitty Sh uh, Shawn Michaels that could actually accept losing. Um... Yeah, Otis lost to Shawn Michaels. That match, unfortunately, which was a good match because it ended with the fat man winning over the cocky white guy. Um, and Vaughn. It's a lot of specifics here. Um, the problem is, is that that like the the crowd loves that specific angle. Um, like that was always the crazy the, the crazy thing about it. The Mandy Rose and uh, Otis stuff is that people loved it. So when you got to hear people's reaction to it, that's what actually made it, I think, special. Without it, it kind of went like, I mean, this is good, but you definitely need an audience um, person there. And to be fair, I think it's because the audience just loves a good, like, they love a good storyline. And, you know, that's wrestling fans in general, but they love a storyline where a woman sticks up for her man. It's the most, like, nothing has changed in the world of wrestling because that's the number one if you want to know, if you want a way for a female wrestler to just be universally loved or hated, she needs to stick up for a man and or dump her man. Um, that's the two ways for ladies to immediately get a reaction. Because it worked for Lana and it's worked for her. Now, there's an alternate way which you could do what Becky Lynch did, which was be a very good wrestler and then bleed and then have your counterpoint be one of the worst female wrestlers in the history of the world. Um, the shitty UFC woman that I can't remember the name of. The one who believes that Sandy Hook was an inside job and was allowed to be champion and was allowed to ruin Mortal Kombat. Uh, <laughs> she's extremely bad. I should probably be careful with the stuff I say like that because YouTube is going to like see that I said that and then it's going to be like, oh, no context, your video is down now. No ads. It's like, okay, man, I wasn't actually talking about the event itself. I was talking about someone with a very bad idea about what happened in it. Um, but I digress. Um, other stuff, Edge versus Randy Orton, it needed people. It needed an actual crowd to see Edge return. That's what it was. Like, they did the best they could. And I actually really like the storyline that they were building towards. But... I feel so sad for Edge, and I hope that the first pay per view, when all this mad, all this crazy madness stuff happens, ends, is him getting his legit pay per view love. It's not going to be the same because it just can't be because WrestleMania is the end all be all in terms of wrestling. That's just the way that it's always been marketed, and that's the way the wrestlers feel about it itself. So there's no helping that. But the thing that's, um, yeah, so I think that the match did find itself, but it's, it's, 
it needed people. Let's just it same like with Mandy Rose and Otis, it just needed the, the crowd reaction, the crowd cheering, the the you still got a chance, you know, stuff like that. Without it it just kinda of feels hollow. You know. And Edge definitely deserves the best match for WrestleMania for being able to do what he did. And he didn't get to have that because of the corona stuff. Uh, so it's unfortunate. Not as unfortunate as all is the bad. I'm glad that they, you know, that no one's um, forming up together to go watch wrestling because the actual thing, good thing to do is to be safe. And honestly, the wrestlers should themselves should not actually be wrestling right now under the current um, th threats that we have. Um, oh, excuse me. Like I sneezed and now all of a sudden my nose is all like weirdly itchy. All right, next next thing. Let me see. Let me try and remember more of night one, because I feel like night one was full of this. Like, yeah, I guess that happened. Um, this sweaty white guy won the twenty four seven championship away from our truth, and then he lost his championship to Gronk, which is dumb. Gronk is a champion now, I guess. Um, I'm pretty sure he can wrestle someday, but it just doesn't feel like. I don't know. I don't feel like it's earned. Hey, like everything about wrestling, I don't feel like it was earned. Uh, what can you do? What can you do about it? Um, let me see. Trying to remember, trying to remember. There was a tag team match, I guess, which featured three people. Which the reason that it was like that is because The Miz showed up to work sick. And that was the reason why Roman Reigns pulled out of his match. Oh, right, the title championships. Oh, right, I forgot, because they were being held by two of the most forgettable white people in the history of the wrestling sport. That's not true. There's plenty of others. Brock Lesnar and Goldberg are boring, though. They always have been. People have fooled themselves into thinking that Brock Lesnar is puts on good matches when, no, he doesn't. What he does is has very good wrestling skills and bad matches. Um... And he's the reason why a lot of main event matches are bad now, because it's like, all of them are the same. <laughs> they're just the either they're the five second like, oh, it's over, or, how shocking, or it's just nonstop finishes, and it's there's no actual flow or feel to it at all, and it's bad. Um, but yeah, he lost. I mean, who cares about the match itself? It was bad, but the right person won. I feel the same way about Goldberg, that it was quick. I, I think the Goldberg and Brock, uh, Braun Strowman one was better, though, because it was very fast. They got it in. Boom, 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 done. They realized that no one actually wants to see Goldberg wrestle for more than a minute. That's just the way it is. So they got in, got out. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Uh, and then finally, I think this is... <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't make the main event, but... Because that's all anyone was talking about. I mean, poor former member of three-man band, Drew Gulak. Gulak? Gulak? Drew Gulak, um, who beat Brock Lesnar. And he deserves it 100%. He's come a long way from how he started and stuff like that. And he's been very good on the on the mic, in the ring, all that stuff. He has, he has the it factor currently, I feel. We'll see how it is now that he's champion in a very weird world, but... Um, it's a shame, too, because that's his first championship win, so he doesn't even get the feeling of it, of having it high on WrestleMania. Um, the actual main event, because the only thing anyone ever has been talking about this WrestleMania, is the... Um, people were talking about the Boneyard match until this match. It was the Firefly Funhouse match, which was John Cena versus The Fiend, uh, a.k.a. Bray Wyatt. Um, holy crap. Just, mmm, chef kiss, fantastic, everything about it. Uh, it paid off multiple years of storyline, of story progression, multiple character work, made you think about, there's a very good article about it on um, Wrestling with Spandex, which I believe is the Uprox website, um, it is by Brandon Stroud. He did a 2,000 word um, article about basically breaking it down in what the story was trying to tell and I read every single piece of it because it was fascinating because um, it was literally someone trying to looking at this match from the the goggles of 
I'm a really big wrestling fan. I understand who John Cena is and why it's so hard to write for him. And, like, all the idiosyncrasies about it and just, like, all the way it was building off history and the WWE in general is insane. Um, it was a very well done match. Very layered. I really think that it was, Gina, leave me alone, girl. Be thirsty for it. Leave me alone. I don't even know where you are. Oh, Route 34. Where is Route 34? Because I might go fight her. Let's see. Ugh. Uh, no, actually, yeah. Hmm. Is it worth it to go all the way there to go fight her? I mean, it's better than fighting these things nonstop. All right, I'm going to go over there real quick. But yeah, I think the WrestleMania was has, was better than it had any right to be. Um, I feel like uh, the right people won. There was no, like... Usually WWE doesn't like you to leave happy. Because um, that's their motto. But this WrestleMania, I feel like, was very good. And was able to be actually like, hey, let's make our fans happy for once. And it was like, thank you? I feel so seen now. <laughs> I'm so happy that you did this. I think it was great. Oh, oh, but yeah, that was WrestleMania. And I don't know what's up now. I'm not gonna waste my time on a level 13. I should have gone under repel, but here we are. I would fly if Jake was not dead. Or if Jake was a gold dad, <laughs> which is what I actually legitimately need. Ah, that's the worst thing. I didn't even get to fly with Jake. Never got to taste the sky. You know what? I should try Flame Wheel. Now that I have a good fire move. This should be able to kill in one hit. Damn right. Alright, let's move on. Um, man. What to talk about now? Um, I saw The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. It's a three hour mil film. Milm? Two hours and 58 minutes to be precise, I guess. But basically, you know, three hours. It's faster to use quick attack on these guys, <laughs> I realized. Um, that's a great movie. I love that movie so much. It's got Tuco. Maybe one of my favorite characters out there. Which is funny, because I usually don't like characters like that. But every once in a while, there exists a perfect storm of one of those characters. And... I ended up loving them a whole mu a whole bunch just because they were like so different from what I expected. And that's definitely one of them. Oh man, which one of you is the pack back girl? Psh. Baby nightmare, leave my leave my presence, baby. Okay, let's go here. Yes, you have been waiting for me. I told you. Let's see. What, what do you got, Gina? Please be at least 20. <laughs> this was a waste of time. This was a huge waste of time. <laughs> I'm now I'm afraid to use repels. Because now I have to go all the way freaking back there. I mean, it's not bad. It's not good. Girl, I cannot believe you asked for a rematch with three level 9 hot pips. Are you on drugs? I cannot believe this woman. The audacity of this bitch. I mean, your bulbs aren't gonna do any better. I hope he gives me more EXP. Because now Nux is too strong. Nux is actually legitimately the strongest Pokemon we have. All that. Do not call me if you can't beat me. Psyduck man, do you have the battle? <sighs> he does not have the battle. Alright, let's go back. Sorry for the delay. I should have never gone back there. Oh well. I think I'm going to go the long way because I don't want to fight a Pokemon. Of course. And back back we go. Mm. But yeah, let me see. 
What else is there to say? Oh yeah, but I love three bad, the three bad and the ugly. A fire emblem, <laughs> fire emblem, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, Tuco is one of those characters, which is also great because he was played by a Jewish man, um, but Tuco is Mexican, and that actor does a fantastic job playing a Mexican bandit. I feel you never, I never realized he was Jewish until way later. Um, Similar to Lou Diamond Phillips, who I didn't think was Mexican for a very long time. He's actually like Filipino, white, and Native American. So, and Native American blood is in Mexican, so. Um, close enough, I suppose, for the time. There came, there was a lot of times where Hispanic actors were just very tan white guys. Um, a good example is West Side Story, which is getting a remake and this is a remake that is actually deserved because the uh, original West Side Story is about Puerto Ricans versus um, Italians and the movie is a bunch of Greek people playing Puerto, Puerto Ricans with Natalie Wood I think is the main girl who is supposed to be Puerto Rican and they just bronze her face really badly and be like that's a Puerto Rican and I'm just like oh you racist motherfuckers I got three at mentions from who? Uh, oh. oh, I don't know, dude. No, okay, someone, I'm a mod for D Freeze uh, channel, not channel, for his um, uh, Discord, which you can join. And he's asking me, is D Free here? No, dude, he's asleep. Let me say, pretty sure he is asleep. That's it. Okay. Back to the training. Okay. Are you here? Are you ready to die, Tentacool? We're almost to the point where we're just one-shotting. Oh. Here's the unfortunate thing is that um, the Tentacool, uh, this thing here is doing a lot of damage to us. It's doing more damage than any of his actual moves do to us, and it's because it's based off of attack. So, Nux's attack is very strong, so confusion hurts him a whole bunch. But it's fine. You know what I should do? I should make a quick attack the first one. It's okay. Back to moving. But yeah, the, the original West Side Story... Um is Greek people playing Puerto Ricans. Not to say there, there's not Puerto Rican actors in it, because there are, um, but it's predominantly white people playing Puerto Ricans. So I feel like that's justified <laughs> in being like, oh, let's remake West Side Story. It's like, why? Yes, the original is a, basically a perfect version of that movie. I'm just saying it could be more perfect if you actually had the right race. Especially because a lot of the themes of West Side Story still plays. Um, even if you if you can get beyond the the dancing part, which is apparently enough to like the musical part of it is enough to make people go like, Ugh. but like musicals are awesome. I don't get people why people don't like musicals. Um, I have a the same conversation with a coworker. He's like, oh musicals, and I'm like, dude, the reason you're like that is because you don't see enough musicals. You only like have a idea in your mind what a musical is, and you don't actually see musicals. Musicals are just like stories with songs put to them. That's it. Um, I was checking the time. So they end up being like... Hmm, I don't know. I'm just saying, give them a chance. I think there's only going to be two videos today uh, for this channel. It's going to be the Donkey Kong one and this. I just have no time because I have to work after this is done. Um, I need to finish my work. I didn't finish it, so and it's due in like four hours. I accidentally went down. I have to finish it if I have to if I want to go to bed. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. And I like money, so therefore it gets priority. But I wanted to make sure to film this because film this, record this because this was the next on the docket. But we're almost there, two levels. Um, but yeah. 
we need more people playing the correct race. Or at least close enough. Like, if Scarlett Johansson's out here saying, I want to be a Mexican, and I'm going to say, no girl, your time has passed. You should have been a Mexican anywhere between the 19... Since the beginning of movies inductions till the 90s. That was your time to play a Mexican. No more. We have actual Mexican women that can play your roles. Or men, depending on what you want to play. So why don't you back the fuck off, bitch. Is what I would say to Scarlett Johansson. Because she needs to learn to fucking slow her goddamn roll. God, so annoyed about her. She's lucky she's very attractive. I mean, she, she doesn't have a chance with me because she doesn't know who I am and would never be interested in me. So I could just flat out say, if she was trying to come for some of this, I would say, no woman. Go be something else. Go be a tree somewhere else. I'm not interested. I have dignity. I have respect. And I have hustle, which is what the what John Cena has taught me about. Um, I don't know. I don't. I can't believe that it's such an it's such an issue with people. It's like, calm down. If you can't hire, Me if you can't find a good Mexican, then you're not finding. You're not looking hard enough. That's my thing. If you can find. 25 million generic white people for whatever role you need then you can find one Mexican. Come on. It's not hard. That's my current belief anyway. Um, hello, Tentacool. Goodbye, Tentacool. I really hope that when the next great move comes in, I don't accidentally get rid of um, <laughs> Quick Attack. Are you kidding me? Why is it always supersonic? This... A uh, specific episode. This training arc is about to be as long as a movie. <laughs> so if anyone makes it this far, I'll be surprised. We're so close. Oh, man. It had to be done. This was the only way I can guarantee no deaths at the next gym. Especially after Jake. And I think this is the last time we're going to have a training arc like this. Just because, like... Well, pretty soon we'll have EXP share, and that's gonna save a lot of time. Because I just need to give EXP share to Professor Oak, and then we're good from there. Our Pokemon no longer have to worry about levels. The only thing we have to worry about is bad matchups. And we basically win the game. Um, assuming we can win the game. Okay, come on. You got this. I mean, we'll have a pretty good team, I think, by the end of this. Acid. Mm hmm. Quick attack. I need to remember to. I'm pretty sure there's a way to get a Pokemon in Bellsprout Tower, but I need to find out the right times <laughs> to go there. Because I'm pretty sure a Pokemon in there, either Bellsprout or I want to say that's where you find Ghastly. I can make uh I can make use of that because we could definitely use a Ghost Pokemon. I think. Um, they're always fun to have. And who wouldn't want a Gengar? Is my saying. Oh, Supersonic. It will help against Psychic types. Since we won't have a Dark type with, um... Oh, well, we don't really need help with Psychic types because we have Nightmare. But still. Don't poison me. Thank you. Okay. <sighs> How could you hurt yourself? Damn it, Nux! If you get crit by this, I swear to god. I'm gonna heal you. Only have two ones of potions. Again, I want him to get the full EXP. That's why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Quick tech. Okay, thank god. That means I don't have to go to the Pokemon Center. 360, nice. No scope. Oh, I also bought the, um, there's a subscri subscription service called the Xbox Game Pass. Um, there's a PC beta for it, and the PC beta is kind of clunky at the moment. Like, I had to reboot my computer for it to recognize that I purchased it. But it's been great. It was, it's $1 currently, so, for the first month, and you have to pay monthly. And I think the monthly thing is like $5, 
Um, but you have access to a whole bunch of games similar to PS Plus, except for the games are actually good. <laughs> and you have a big library of them as opposed to just two. And the first one I picked was... One of the games I picked to start playing is Indivisible, which has been fantastic. I love that game. Um, getting used to some of the combat stuff. It, it looks gorgeous. The only thing that's a bummer about it is that it's not fully animated cutscenes. Um, some of the cutscenes are animated, but not all of them. And if all of them were um, animated, I think this would be an easy 5 out of 5 game for me. Like, everyone should go play it. I think everyone should go play it now. The only bummer of it is know that the fantastic animations of the battle sprite, um, <laughs> not all the cutscenes are the same quality. They're kind of more like, um, and this is very mean, but glorified animatics. So, I mean, there's, yeah, that's like how I, f they're like storyboards with like pretty colors on them, but <sighs> they were so close to being just, if they had actually just gone, it, the budget would have been too much. So I understand why they didn't do it, but come on. Come on. Uh, but it's great. It plays like, what's the, it's like an action J, uh, JRPG, kind of, kind of like the Mario and Luigi games. Oh, I never post about the Mario and Luigi games, and I love the Mario and Luigi games. They're fantastic. Um, it's a shame they're they're so good. That's the reason why Paper Mario changed, but we'll ignore that for now. That's just an unfortunate side of history on that one. Um, God, man, it's so good though. Um, what the hell was I talking about? This video has been going so long, I forget what the hell I'm talking about anymore. We've been going for an hour and 21 minutes, and that's not including the water break that I had. Um. Fuck. Oh yeah, so Xbox Game Pass. There's a lot of good games up on there. Um, if you're if you have a pretty good PC, um, and you can't afford a dollar for the first month, I would suggest getting it. It seems like too good of a deal not to get. That's the kind of deal I kind of feel from it. And this is of course not sponsored, but. And some people will have like a stick up their ass about Microsoft. I don't. They've definitely made some bad decisions, but they've owned up to them and have tried to improve. Now, whether or not they're succeeding is a different different thing. But I can say right now that this specific pass is better than anything Sony's offering. Because you can actually get it on your PC as well. So you don't even need to have, which is a criticism they have, but also it's the best part about Microsoft, is that you don't need one of their consoles to play their games. You just need a PC, and if you have a console, then you have double the good experience. And they also be like, oh, you can play it on either or. So it's like, why do I buy the console? Well, the reason why you buy a console, which is what people forget about the entire reason to buy a damn console, is that you don't, you can't afford a PC. Or you don't want to deal with the hassle of um, a PC, which has always been one of the reasons why people don't like using PCs for their main handheld, their main, handheld, their main gaming console, is that a PC requires more maintenance than a console does because any number of things can go wrong with a PC game and you won't know why. With a console game, you will always understand if there's a problem, if there's an issue because <laughs> every PC is built the exact same way with no difference in them. And if something screws up in it, then it's easy to understand and easy to solve, in theory. Um, but that's not, you don't have that on a PC. So that's why people will usually go console over PC. And the people who choose to forget that are always infuriate me. Because it's, oh, I feel like it's always been the reason why you go console over PC, is that you don't want to deal with a PC. But if you have both, and you can deal with both, why not have an experience that's great on both? It just doesn't make any sense. If Sony was doing the same thing, people would give them free hand jobs. That's how happy they would be if they were like, oh my god, the GOAT series lets me do this? Oh my god. They let me pay $20? Oh my god. So good. But no. And I get it. Microsoft screwed up big on 360 era, near the end of the 360 era, <laughs> in the beginning of Xbox One. They definitely deserved all the beating they got. Because the level of hubris they had was Sony level. I still feel the, um, for my money, the PS3 is the greatest fumble in video game history. <laughs> The second being the Nintendo 64, um, and the third being, actually, uh, I don't want, you know, no, 
No, the Nintendo 64 is a bigger fumble than the Xbox One. I'm gonna say that right now. Because as much as I love the Nintendo 64, there is no denying that um, so the Sonic, uh, Nintendo, something changed with that console that never recovered. A part of them, like, the, they never really got back the market share until, like, we. And by then, things were very different. <sighs> fuck you, Todd, Todd. I was literally there and you didn't want to fight me. So why don't you go fuck off with your Psyduck? Done with this man. But yeah, uh, I should like I'm hard on uh, Sony, but they have the current best um, console experience. There's no denying that, um, and I really do like the. They're the only one I think currently with a streaming service. Xbox One does not have a streaming service, as far as I'm aware. Not on the level of PS Now, where it's like you basically have access to all these games and streaming side, which is great. Um, there's a bunch of good aspects. I just feel like people are quick to point out every good thing about Sony and then never actually acknowledge any of the bad shit they do and do the exact opposite for Microsoft. And I get it, but you need to learn to let your biases die, dude. That's what you need to do. Otherwise, you're just never going to live a life, a happy life in video games. I don't understand them. So much of the people who are just like, oh, like, ugh. Nintendo doesn't understand anything. Look at them wasting money, and it's like, dude, who's who, what game is currently everyone playing? Is it Doom Eternal? No, it's Animal Crossing. Now, of course, Doom Eternal, plenty of people played, plenty of people loved. Shout out to Toast if you made it this far. Um, but no one's had of the consoles currently being bought. It's not Xbox One and PS4s that are currently out of stock. It is the Switch. It is Animal Crossing. It is those games. So don't try and be like, oh, they lose so much money, when actually they make more money than you ever imagine, and you just are salty. Come on. Now, of course, when they fail, they fail. There's no denying that Wii U was one of the greatest... Just like... Not one of the greatest. Because I, I mentioned the top three. I don't think it, it's, it's at the top three, but it's definitely in maybe top ten of just like failed opportunities. Especially when you consider how big we was and then how badly they were just like confusing everyone. It's actually infuriating. And I love my Wii U. I think it was... Um, without the Wii U, we would not have the vastly improved version of the Switch, but... Um, there's no denying that it was very... There's a reason why Switch, uh, Wii U games are being ported over to Switch at 60 full ass dollars. It's because nobody actually wanted them. So here's the reason why that... Um, if you ever wonder, like, how come Nintendo games don't go down in price? It's because their demand never leaves. Um, they, there's a scarcity of them, for one thing. There's never enough of them. And the other thing is, is that they're always in demand no matter what. Um, so if the game is a little bit less on demand, it will be like, it won't be the full 60. It'll go down to like, something like ARMS, for example, is not full 60, I think. But something like Legend of Zelda, that's never going down in price. If anything, it will go up in price as time goes on. Um, because of the pedigree that it has, and also just because people never stop wanting it. People still want cartridges of the original Zelda game. So that tells you that people have a specific attachment to them and they want them and they always have them and that's the way that the Nintendo game market will always be and it's not a good thing either and I really do wish that they had more sales by the way um because they need it good lord do they need it I need it now that the world is in the state that it is dude you put down tropical freeze from 60 to 20 and that's an insta buy from me on god all right. And with that, speaking of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, it is complete. So with this, everyone, that's the end of today's episode. I've been Wogi. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. It's over an hour and 30 minutes. Oh, it's such a fucking mistake.
Okay, everyone. Until next time. Because next episode, we're actually going to fight the gym. Goodbye, everyone. See you next time.